Welcome back to Naval Action and um, we're going to do a bit of a ship review on this beauty, the Agamemnon. So the Agamemnon um, was built or ordered in 1777 and around that time for whatever reason the Brits were doing a bit of a thing where they liked to name all their ships after sort of historical heroes and the likes and so the Agamemnon named after a Greek king from Homer's Iliad, Odyssey. Um, uh, basically, he was the brother of the chap whose wife was half-inched um, and kicked off the, uh, the, the Helen and kicked off the, the, the Trojan Wars. Um, the British sailors weren't as keen on the naming conventions used by their lords and masters, and so they tended to bastardise all the names of the ships. And so this baby was known as the Eggs and Bacon, so it's good to know that um, that sort of sense of humour is still um, alive and well, that sort of uh, wry British wit. It's an interesting ship. It was classed as a third rate uh, by the British Navy. Um, a big 60 odd gun, 64 gun third rate. Um, in game she's classed as a frigate so that means medium grade notes to build and it's the frigate perk that you get the benefits from um how and she but however she has a a high br so she has a br of 400 which is like 20 odd percent higher than the connie um and at the moment uh, now this could change she can't actually go into deep uh water port battles now that might change because she's only been out for a little while but that sort of makes her like the niagara or the niagara um is to the shallow uh waters which means she's a great ship but her place in the game is a bit interesting really if she can't go into the, the bigger port battles her armament is also interesting um and I'll, I'll go through that in detail. Basically, she's got loads of guns, right? 64 guns. Uh, she's got 26 on the bottom deck, uh, 24 pounders. So they're a lower caliber than, say, the Inge. Um, and you can't fit carronades. And that really is the interesting thing with this ship, is the lack of carronade options. She also has 26 guns on the middle deck. They're 18 pounders. Um, the weather deck is pea shooters. They're 9 pounders, although you can put... 12 pounder carronades on there but that's still relatively low caliber um she's got bow and stern chain uh, chasers uh, they can either be nine pounders or 42 pound carronades um and this uh, we'll go through the comparisons with effectively her contemporaries in a moment but let's just talk about the ship and um and her life a little bit she saw an absolute pants load of action uh, did the eggs and bacon or the aggie she was launched in 81 um, she fought a couple of battles uh, Ushant and uh, Sance uh, both successful engagements she probably would have gone to the old knackers yard had it not been for the French Revolution and those pesky Americans uh, being rather cheeky um, and as uh, she proved to be a rather high maintenance ship, basically her wooden fittings and her keel um, were prone to sort of separating a little bit. Uh, and as a result, um, she was quite a high maintenance ship and, and on three or four different occasions she found herself needing a refit uh, to basically fix her, her uh, planking. Uh, along her keel. Um, however, in um, 1784, she had a bit of a. Uh, uh, she was laid ordinary and, um, and and looked like she might not really see much action. However, when the French and the Americans started getting a bit uppity, all ships were called upon, and she was drawn back into service. And she was fortunate enough uh, to become. Nelson's ship. So Nelson, uh, an extraordinary man who, you know, at the age of 13 was a midshipman by the time he, he commanded at uh, Trafalgar. He had 30 odd years experience, which is just amazing. Now imagine being 13 as a midshipman in, in 
sort of the, the, the life and times that you had in these in, in sort of these hardy days as it were uh, what an experience that would have been um, she fought at Copenhagen um, where the, 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 the British and the Danes came, came to blows um, but probably as with a lot of the ships at the time her, her, her moment in the sun her moment of glory was when um, she was eighth in line on uh, Nelson's weather column at Trafalgar and uh, when she came into battle she actually came up against the Santissima Trinidad um, but of course she came up against initially the stern of the Santissima Trinidad and caused a lot of damage to the Santi and the Santi ended up striking her colours so actually the Aggie is uh, credited with uh, the surrender of the Santissima which is uh, no mean feat given the, um, the size and calibre and quality of the Santissima um, one of the biggest ships ever to sail uh, sort of in this age she is um, she then went on to several more engagements um, initially around the Mediterranean and then later over in the Caribbean until she moved down to South America proper and it was there that her fantastic career came to an end um, where she was um, trying to get into Rio de Janeiro and managed to get snagged up on a sandbank and although her crew and her contents were salvaged the damage to her already decaying hull um, basically meant that she was left to fail and flounder and eventually sink and interestingly enough uh, just recently uh, the wreck has been found and they've managed to bring up one of the cannons one of the 24 pound cannons as well as uh, some bits and pieces uh, one of uh, Nelson's seals so um, and that was uh, quite quite recently that that's happened so let's compare her to her contemporaries now the fourth rates in naval action are all a bit wobbly at the moment to be honest because you've got the Connie uh, which was really designed to be the king of the frigates uh, the Connie was designed to be faster than a soul so it could get away from a ship of the line but basically be able to bully any frigate now in the fourth rate class we also have the Ingerman land now the Ingerman land really is a is a third rate it's just that it was a, a very early build um, as a third rate um, um, so the Ingerman land is, is in my mind it's a third and a half rate um, this ship is a third rate by any man's call uh, but she's treated in game as a frigate and as such um, in theory she'll be coming up against Connie's and Ingies although like I say she can't actually participate in the port battles so uh, that in itself is a bit interesting. Um, but what I'll do is I'll compare and contrast her against the Connie, the Inge, and a third rate proper. And you can see why, despite it being a bit of an odd combo in the fourth rates, um, she actually probably fits in quite well. So if we look at her basic stats, uh, and we'll compare her to a Connie first of all. So she's got 500 crew out of the box. And uh, that's 50 more than a Constitution. Um, she does have a lot of guns. So I would recommend either a crew space build or running her with hammocks. So that you've always got plenty of spare crew um, to manage those guns. I'd also recommend when a gun isn't loading. So these guys here aren't loading. Use F5 to turn those guns off so that more crew are dedicated um, to the other side you'll see here now I've got pretty much I've got 121 sailors spare you can see that in boarding but nowhere near enough to man both sets of uh, gun decks uh, this trinks uh, stern camping me a little bit which is a bit, a bit annoying but anyway no worries there we can string out the battle long enough to do the comparison so she's got 50 crew more than a Connie probably the the big bonus of this ship is that she's got um, a lot more hull um, thickness and armor 
So armor is what makes the balls bounce, and um, she's got a whopping um, 64 armor out of the box, which is 10 more than a Connie, um, and that's really significant. That will bounce a lot of shots, especially angled. Um, 64 isn't far off um, being a fully blown third rate, to be honest, compared to the other the other ships. Um, she's got a lot more health or um, uh, sort of strength in her hull so out of the box um, she's um, basically got 7400 side structure um, which is a good 10% more than a Connie uh, it's an extra 600 side structure uh, and that's quite significant to be honest um, it means you can take a lot more damage but also and very importantly it also means you can give um, when you use your repair kit you will get a lot more out of it so um, re repair kits work on a percentage of repair so the more sides the more structure you have then the more repair you get and therefore the more damage they have to do to you again and that really is where the uh, the benefit of having a powerful ship is. Um, so having you know ten percent more than the Connie, and then you imagine you repair, and if you like I do, you run with say carpenter teams, and you run with say a, a toolbox. Um, that's a lot more DPS that your enemy has to do to you to bring you down again. She turns marginally slower than a Connie, but fractionally, um, it's it's like we're down into the the uh, hundredths. Um, so pretty much the same as a Connie. She sails really smoothly. She does keep, she does lean over a little bit. If I pull out now, you'll see she's leaning quite a bit. She exposes a fair amount of under underbelly. Um, so. Normalizing, uh, depowering your sails is a good idea to get that sort of steady firing um, that you need. I'm too slow to turn through the wind to it anyway. Um, so she turns reasonably well, and and she 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 does feel closer to a Connie um, for her turning. Although she uh, her deacceleration isn't that of a Connie, because I'd imagine she's a, a heavier beast. Um, her damage is is so if it's cannons you're talking about her damage is quite a bit more than the connie so it's about 20 percent more than the connie um as far as her broadside damage is concerned however because she can't work with carronades you can't really armor with carronades apart from on her top deck um the connie has a huge advantage over her a 25% advantage over if you're running with a carronaded Connie. Um, so that's why there's a little bit of balance there. Now, of course, you have to get quite close um, in order for your carronades to be effective. And as I'll show you now, you can always load um, double charge or double shot to increase your penetration or your, um, or your damage with, with longs or with mediums. But the Connie comes back into the game a bit if it's running carronades. Now it does have to get through a lot more armour. But because you need to be close anyway with carronades, um, if these two could meet in a port battle, um, if you were sailing the Aggie and you noticed that the Connie was, was sailing with uh, carros, and you can tell that by going through your telescope and just seeing how far the guns project, you can tell these are longs or mediums. Um, so uh, that in itself is interesting. Um, now, compared to the Inge, um, she's actually got slightly less DPS, even with just cannons versus cannons. And um, although she uh, doesn't suffer quite as badly when you do the carronade comparison, because the um, Inge doesn't carry lots of carronades either, um, or certainly not as high a caliber as uh, the Connie, um, she's she's got slightly less DPS, about eight percent less DPS with cannons than the Ingi. Um, however, 
because he does have an advantage with having so many guns, because you do lose a lot of guns in naval action. And by having more guns, uh, when you lose one, it's less important because your DPS is still there on the other 25 odd guns you've got on this side of the ship. Whereas if you lose one gun um, and it's a 42 pound carrier, that's a bigger lump of your DPS that you've just lost. Um, she's faster than the Connie and she's much faster than the Ingi. She's more than half a knot faster than the Ingi. She's about a third of a knot faster than a Connie. Um, and that's interesting because that makes her a really good sort of chase ship at this tier. Um, because she's faster than both of them and she's got chasers, um, you can kit this ship out to be an excellent sort of tagging ship. So she's probably a good port denial ship. Um, or, or was while flags still existed. That won't be for, for long. Um, so, um, she, again, she's, um, she's got more hull strength, um, more, more, more health, as it were, than the Ingi um, by about 500. And she's actually got marginally more armour than the Ingi. She's got a couple more armour than the Ingi. Um, but the Ingi has the advantage of having a much uh, higher... Uh, caliber gun deck so the Ingi runs around uh, with um, that higher gun deck so if you're in an Ingi and you're up against an Agamemnon you basically want to sit at about 250-300 meters where your lower gun deck will penetrate her but her gun deck will penetrate you a lot less uh, especially if you pull a little bit of an angle on her um, and, and this is why she's probably, her balance isn't too bad despite the fact she's got that high BR which is always nice to bring into a fight. Um, she is um, a, a, a ship that because she can't run Caro's and, and she only runs uh, 24 pounders on her uh, gun deck, her DPS is not as crazy as you might think for a 64 gun um, what is essentially a third rate. Um, she's disposing of this trink with no worries at all, but that's because I've chosen an easy, easy fight while I'm talking. Um, she has slightly more crew still than the Ingi, um, and again, she needs it because of her um, massive amount of cannons. Um, and so again, yeah, so she has everything over the Ingi, except the Ingi... Um, has probably got a bit of better penetration at range. Now, how does she compare against a proper third rate? So if we just look at the sort of standard third rate one gets out of the garage, um, she's got a lot less DPS just with cannons than a regular third rate, more than 15-20% more than less DPS. Um, and carronades, she's almost got 50% less DPS, not quite, maybe 40% less DPS. So a third rate broadside on broadside will have her bent over a barrel, to be honest. Um, a big advantage over the third rate is her speed. Um, that's really where she will shine against a third rate and her turning her maneuverability against a third rate um, will give her the upper hand. Um, her, well, her turn rate's about the same, but her speed is a good knot and a half faster, so you can take advantage of that. You're more nimble. You've got more choices of what you're doing. You can arc your turn away from them, protect the weak side, and come back in on the same side easy enough. Um, she has only a small amount um, less hull, uh, um, hull strength, so she does quite well with the hull strength. They're almost the same. They're not quite. The third rate has a little bit more. Uh, she has quite a lot less armor. She's got a full 10 less armor. So a third rate is around the sort of low 70s and she's 64. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. Um, so basically she's, she's not a match for a third rate. Um, as depicted by the game. With its sort of default third rates. Um, and typically you'd expect her to beat an Ingi, you'd typically expect her to beat a Connie, but that's mostly because of her health pool, not because of her DPS. And if you engage a Connie that's got carronades, um, you're going to have to 
you're going to have to try and use your longs while the carronades are still perhaps struggling with range. Um, and if you're against an inghi, well, you want to get nice and close because otherwise the inghi's uh, bottom deck will just wear you down over time. And that is the Agamemnon. She sails fine. Uh, she looks good. She's for me. She's sort of. She's got that sort. Of, she's she's far more rounded than some of the other British ships. Some of the British ships do tend to look a bit blocky. She's far more rounded. Some say she looks like a baby Victory. Uh, for me, she looks more like a baby Boussante, but she doesn't have a garden shed. Um, so clearly less embarrassing uh, than the Boussante with its with its man cave. Uh, Fitted to the back. She does lean a reasonable amount, um, so you could consider using some ballast with her. Um, I'm happy depowering sails and angling in and out personally, that, that's never been a, a problem. Um, you can trim your sails to, to drop your angle there. You see, she was at 4%, I can trim my sails and I'll come down to pretty much no percent. Um, or you can just depower. And um, that will drop your um, your lean. Um, of course, you lose your acceleration. Uh, I I think she's all right. I, I think because she can't go into the port battles, um, she's a bit of a, a novelty ship to some extent. Um, I'm assuming they're going to have to fix that because she get pants in a deep water in a regional. Uh, she, she just wouldn't fare well enough against things like Boussantas and Pavlovas and the Bolognas and uh, first rates. She would get pants. She'd probably be quite a good stern camper um, on a first rate. And a good chase ship to keep people locked up in a battle. If your opponents were trying to flee, she'd make a good chase ship. So as such, she's probably a great open water um, ganking ship. If you're taking trinks and connies uh, bring this baby in she'll bring the muscle against um, anything that isn't a, a fourth rate or above uh, she'll bring some serious muscle while retaining the mobility and while um, giving you that ability to chase an opponent down and keep them tagged um, with her chases with her nine pound chases um, yeah that's it that's the eggs and bacon as she's called, you can, currently, as I'm making this video, you can only get the blueprint from the special events, which means if you're on an Aussie timer, you can't get them at all, unless you're insomniac and you're up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, so you just have to hope someone in your nation who has the fortitude to craft 100 of these a week um, jags the blueprint, or that the developers give us some other avenues to get hold of the blueprint. Uh, I quite like her, she moves quite nicely, I'm just not convinced that she has a place, a role to play right now. Um, if I was in a deep water port battle, um, you know, I can't take this ship in, so I'll be running with my Inghies or, or your Connies, depending on your religion to some extent. If, um, if you're in a regional battle, a regional port, well clearly you're going to be taken in the first or a second rate. Um, so her role might be open water gang fleets, uh, where you're using her to chase down um, other fourth rates, or control other fourth rates, because her manoeuvrability really is quite nice. Um, and of course she can soak up the damage, she can, with 70, um, with such a large amount of um, health to play with, 7400 out of the box, and if you sort of do live oak and and some planking and, and, and the likes, you can, you can bump that up significantly, um, then she can suck up the damage all day long. So there you go, the eggs and bacon, the Agamemnon, um, British third rate, currently classed in game as a fourth rate, and probably trapped somewhere in between. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe. I will see you on the oceans, and I will catch you.